Welcome to Restaurant Influencers presented by Entrepreneur. My name is Sean Walsh, founder of Cali BBQ and Cali BBQ Media. In life, in the restaurant business, and in the new creator economy, we learn through lessons and stories. We got an incredible episode today. We have Bennett Maxwell. You can find him at Bennett Maxwell 35 on Instagram, TikTok, LinkedIn, all the platforms that matter. And you can find his brand at dirty underscore dough. Bennett, welcome to the show. Thank you. I appreciate it. You're giving me the plugs before you even start. I like it. Oh, that's how that's how we do it. If uh, if we can't if we can't tag you, we can't pimp you. So um, that's how it goes down on the social storytelling. We're grateful to Toast, our primary technology partner, for believing in this show, for believing in the power of storytelling, for helping hospitality professionals sell more things online and. Uh, you know, really giving us this opportunity to have conversations like this. Uh, you guys are in for a treat because uh, Bennett is playing the game within the game, as we like to say. Bennett, where in the world is your favorite stadium, stage, or venue? My favorite stadium, stage, or venue? Hmm. That is a, a hard one for somebody that doesn't go to any sporting events. <laughs> um vivid concert? arena you can go vivid, concert? vivid arena that's where i go because i'm in salt lake and uh yeah we go to concerts there we went to disney on ice with the kids there okay. recently um that's that's the only venue what's it called really. what's the venue called uh, vivid smart home arena it's vivid. where the jazz play okay vivid smart what are they vivid. what is it's a security system security system stuff. with naming with naming rights for the jazz stadium yeah yeah Wow, they must be doing very well for themselves. Name, they, naming rights are cheap these days. Yep, no, they're doing they're doing well. They're uh, they're the largest door to door company in the nation. I'm sure the world as well. But yeah, they're out of here in Utah. Wow, that's impressive. Cool. Well, uh, we'll go to we'll go uh, to where the Jazz play. We're gonna put you on center court. We're gonna rent out the entire place, and uh, the people that listen to this show, hospitality professionals, content creators from all over the world, we're gonna come and pack the arena. NBA, uh, NBA style. I know you guys had the all-star game there. So NBA all-star yep. style, I'm going to put you on center court and I'm going to tell you, uh, I need your elevator pitch, Bennett. You're a man that's built many companies, sold companies, give, uh, give this stadium a, a standing ovation for what, what, what have you built with dirty dough? Um, dirty dough is the world's most simplistic food franchise. We've taken out a lot of the headaches of labor, um, employees, doing things by hand and automated that. So when you compare us to any of the competitors out there in the large gourmet cookie space, from what I've seen, everybody's doing everything by hand. You order your, your own ingredients, you mix 60 cookies at a time, you weigh it by hand, you portion it by hand, you form it by hand. Uh, we mix thousands of cookies at a time in a centralized um, production spot. We get our cost of goods a lot lower because we centralize all of the produce it from there. We do the world's only three layer cookie with this particular machine. So you have like a peanut butter cookie on the outside, chocolate dough in the, in the middle. And in the very center, there's hot fudge. We ship out this cookie dough puck to our franchisees and all they have to do is put it in the oven. So we operate out of less than a thousand square feet with one or two employees at a time, really, really easy and simple to run. And that's what, that's what dirty dough is all about is simplicity, empowering, people through entrepreneurship with a simplistic food franchise model, as well as a mental health message to the world of it's what's on the inside matters most because we focus on the inside of the cookies rather than the outside. Love it. And uh, recently you launched your own podcast. Um, tell me why, why'd you launch the show? Yeah. Deeper than dough. So it goes along with that uh, mental health messaging of before I bought dirty dough, I had a solar company just down the street from you, Sean, and uh, loved the area, loved everything going about it. You know, most people don't leave San Diego, by the way. I know. <laughs> are you Are you okay? Are you feeling okay? Cookies <laughs> drew me away. Um, Cookies so good, you'd leave San Diego. There's your new tagline. Exactly. <laughs> so um, solar was going great, and I was working really hard, and I was really good at uh, solar cells and recruiting and that whole that whole gig. When I sold the company... I told myself that, you know, once I had X amount of dollars in the bank and X amount of rental properties, um, then I would have more free time to go on vacation with my family and be happier, right? 
Well, that happened and it, selling the company was great and the money hit my account was great. And I had some rent, uh, you know, a handful of rental properties. All of that was great. Within a week or so, I fell back into my routine of just like, I'm always grinding, working. And so I started looking inward. I'm like, okay, I need to break this habit or it's, I'm going to do this for the rest of my life. And I'm going to miss my kids growing up and I have three kids. So that was kind of my personal journey of looking inward. Why do not my actions not match what I tell myself, I believe, which is family's most important. Um, but yet I'm spending most of my time with my job. So I completely kind of restructured my life, came up with my mission statement, um, had Dirty Dough adopt that mission statement, and it gave me so much clarity. So and then I started this podcast, Deeper Than Dough. So more than money, right? What are, what What's the actual goal, goal post or target that we're going for? And if it's money, we're going to be disappointed when we get there because you're going to get a dopamine hit. And guess what? That dopamine doesn't stay in your brain for that long. So you really have to find that joy and fulfillment on the way rather than hope that it's at the destination. So that's what the Deeper Than Dope podcast is all about is mainly entrepreneurs, but what is giving us joy and fulfillment in life and in our businesses? And how are we giving other people, helping other people have more joy and fulfillment through entrepreneurship? I love it. Uh, recently, I huge fan of Jesse Itzler. Jesse Itzler is a keynote speaker, content creator. He's married yep. to uh, the founder of Spanx, um, but he does an incredible job just creating creating content. And one recently he posted something on Instagram of all these successful people. And he said the common thread between all of them was don't give up what you have chasing what you want. Mm -hmm. What for you, what is the thing that you have that you don't want to give up? I have an amazing family. I have, a, I have a beautiful wife and I have three kids, six, four, and two. And I have an amazing relationship with all of them. I'm going on dates, at least the, the older two, the two daughters, the six and four every day. Where are we going to go? You know, and it's, and I mean, these, these are like quick dates, like Walmart or, you know, whatever, or, or doing a, a yoga session <laughs> together. Yeah. Um, but that's something that I don't want to give up. I, I see so many other people get so lost in work and, and, and I'm interviewing people on the podcast, you know, and they're, I'm 30. I just turned 30. Um, and they're, you know, 40 or 50. And they're like, man, yeah, I, I missed, I missed my kids growing up. And I was like, uh, that's not going to be me. Yeah. And now as somebody that's been successful, sold companies, and you have a podcast that's deeper than dough, so much of what we do on this show, talking about storytelling, talking about being bigger than just one restaurant or multiple restaurants is having a, a bigger mission. Um, what what compelled you to launch the show and why why podcasting um one i lo i really love the idea of being able to interview other people and see what what they're doing compared to what i'm doing so it was really like a how do i learn from other people um how do i educate other people on the things that i do know and i and i and i challenge people on the podcast you know they're like I don't know, a month or so ago, somebody said something like, well, what are you going to do? If you have an investor meeting at 6 PM, are you, of course you're going to go to it. Like you have to go to it and you're not going to be with your family. And I'm like, well, no, I don't, I'm not going to it. Like it, there's nobody that's that important. That's going to dictate the hours that I live my life and with my family or with this, it's like, if they can't wait till the next F and day, then they're not, they're not your partner anyway. Right. So a lot of it was just sharing the story and sharing my experiences, challenging other people and to be better. And then also learning from, I mean, I've had so many people say, I do this to stay on top of my mental health and stay in a good head, head space. You know, this is what I do. This is what I do. Yesterday or two days ago, I was interviewing somebody and he talked about suicidal thoughts that he had and how he then went and shared those thoughts with his kids um, the, that are teenagers and said, Hey, like, I just want to be upfront and honest with you. And this was like two or three years ago. And now he has such a good relationship with his kids because he was open and vulnerable of how he was feeling. And now he's like, now my kids are my support, which I'm just like, that blew me away. You know, like, no, 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 dads have to be strong. You know, you can't. And he's like, nope, I'm not. He's like, this is how I, I've been doing it. And it's brought him closer to his kids and while providing support. So I've also loved learning from other people and their tips and tricks on uh, how to stay sharp mentally. What was the turning point? Because as somebody as young as you are, you said you're 30 years old. Mm -hmm. As somebody as young as you are, typically you're building companies. Um, you're successful at building companies. Like you said, you sold your company. And within a week, you were already on to the next thing. 
but what was the turning point of understanding that it wasn't just about the money it was about something deeper um the turning point was i thought i was going to feel a certain way and i did and it was amazing but it went away so it's like well how long is that going to last so really the turning point was realizing that that great feeling of success after selling the company is is only temporary so then what do you do well do i, do I choose the next shiny object and say okay well i'm going to you know i'm going to run dirty dough till we have a thousand locations and then sell it. Cause that is the next shiny object for me. Well, if I do, that's going to take me, I mean, at the rate, we're growing really quickly. How many and I think I can do, do it now. We just opened up store number 15. Um, and we franchised a year ago, but we've sold 320. We're opening up one, one every week right now, one or two a week. So wow. I think we'll hit it in five years, but I'm not going to put my joy and fulfillment on the sideline for the next five years. Right. I'm going to have find I guess, joy in the journey along the way. So that that was the tipping point is I was 28 when I sold the company and it was just like, oh crap, I'm going to do this for the rest of my life. If I don't change, I started seeing a therapist just saying, Hey, wh why, why am I telling myself this, but doing something completely different? And then it was really, okay, well, what do you want to be known for? What do you, I started really searching inward. I didn't have a mission statement. Now I do, which drives everything. My mission statement, which is dirty dose mission statement as well is to find joy and fulfillment despite life's dirtiness in myself and others. I want to be happy. I want to be fulfilled. Fulfillment comes from working on something bigger than myself, right? Despite life's dirtiness to me is don't wait to sell your solar company to find the joy and fulfillment. And I need to focus on myself first and help as many people as possible. Once I did that, then the next step was core value. Like this is what drives me. And then it's easy to make those decisions of, Hey, come to this business networking event dinner. It's at 8 PM. And it's like, no, I've already decided I'm not going. I don't even know what it is because I don't work past five because I'm not going to sacrifice my family. Like I have enough right now. I just need to freaking enjoy it um, in the work hours and then enjoy my family in the off work hours. Huge news. Toast, our primary technology partner at our barbecue restaurants in San Diego and the primary technology partner of so many of the guests that we have on this show have announced they are expanding their business offerings with Google. So now if you search on Google Maps and you sign up for Toast Tables or Toast Waitlist, you will have the opportunity to improve the digital hospitality experience of the guest, allow them to book through the maps into the Toast Reservation system. One of the biggest difficulties that restaurant guests have is when they search for your restaurant and they want a table, they do not have an easy solution to book a table or to get on a wait list. This is huge news for the restaurant industry, huge news for guests and huge news for you, the restaurant owner. Check out Toast Tables today and find out the new integrated solution that they have. This is something that we've wanted for a long time. How do you integrate reservations, wait lists into your point of sale? Toast has done it. Check it out. The point that when you decided to go see a therapist, how did you get to there? Um, there's a show called Billions, and there's a guy named Bobby Axelrod, and yeah. and and you see this in multiple other shows, you know, of people struggling with just that that overdrive in our brain, like the next thing, next thing, the next thing. And this dude is a, I think, I think in the show, it's been a few years, um, but I think he hit ten billion dollars. And he's still going for the next thing. And so he went and did like some ayahuasca retreat, plant medicine. You know, I'm like, if he's doing that, at, I know it's a fictional show, right? But if he's doing that at $10 billion yep. and I'm only at a few million dollars, like I'm going to do this for the rest of my effing life. <laughs> you know yep. what I mean? So that was like, I have to change. How do I change? I don't know. What is a therapist? I don't know. You know, therapy is for wimps. Yeah, <laughs> that's what I grew up with. But I'm like, well, what's the worst that can happen? I go out there, I feel uncomfortable, and I leave. I'm like, I'm a freaking door to door salesman. I've not a hundred thousand doors. Like, I'll go talk to a freaking therapist. So it was a little like I didn't know how to do. It. I didn't know how to find somebody. Um, and I thought it was going to be expensive, which it wasn't. It was ten buck, ten dollar copay with insurance. Mm -hmm. And I still see a ther therapist, um, like every other week typically. And it's really good to see the lens and the world from not what's going to make my business, what's going to make me the most wealth, but rather what's going to make me the most comfortable with myself. Yeah. And then that judges my business decisions, which 
what determines my business decisions, which then make me happier and in a better mind space. And then I'm more productive and it still increases the, you know, the, the wealth or the enterprise value of my business more than anything else has. So focusing on myself and getting myself correct first has, has definitely been the best decision I've ever made. I appreciate you uh, having the courage to share that on, you know, on a show like this, it's important for us. You've obviously created a show um, to talk about mental health. And I believe in the hospitality business, we're very bad at talking about mental health. Um, it's crazy as an industry, we spend so much time giving back to others, giving back to our community, giving back to our team, but very rarely do we give back to ourselves and prioritize mm -hmm. ourselves. Um, I too see a therapist. Um, we talk about therapy and I appreciate you having the courage um, to continue to talk about it because unfortunately, most of the time it's too late, right? I mean, it's never too late, but it's better to be proactive than reactive. And um, if anybody's listening to the show, there's incredible resources out there. I'm not a specialist by any means, um, nor is Bennett, but we're we're here having a conversation as men, um, as fathers, um, husbands. And uh, yeah, it's it's important to, to begin the conversation. That, that proactive approach is really... Cause I'm like, I didn't see a therapist because I had anxiety or bipolar depression. Or something. I started seeing a therapist to just be like, what the hell is my mind? What is my psyche? What is consciousness? And I started diving deep into meditation and all that, but I'm like, I'm so glad I did do it proactively because as dirty dough started growing more and we started taking on investments and now we're opening up a store a week right now, it's like, it's stressful as hell. <laughs> yeah. And I think if I started down the mental health journey of like, I need to be proactive and you know, set aside space and know how to cope with stress. If I started doing that right now, I'd be, I'd, I would be behind. I'd be screwed over. So when I started doing it, I'm like, I think everybody needs to. I mean, what's the most important thing in life? I, I feel like most people are going to agree that we're here. We want to find joy. We want to find fulfillment. Like that's what pretty much everybody's after. What's the number one determining factor in how you feel? What, what your mood? What's your mind? And what is your, and that's your mental health, but mental health is like, I don't know. Mental health is depression. No, it's like mental health is your health mentally. Who yep. is going to the gym that only goes to the gym when they're diagnosed with, you know, cancer or heart, um, heart disease or whatever. It's like, no, you have to be proactive. So I'm a very big proponent of everybody should be taking care of themselves, their minds first. Um, and the more you dive into that, then it's like, okay, well, the mind's connected with the body. I do need to exercise because that increases my mood. I do need to go into the sauna or the cold bath or yep. red light. Like there's so many different things that you do to your body to um, enhance your mood, but no, I'm a big believer in being proactive. Yeah. I think uh, I was listening to a podcast with the uh, diary of a CEO and he had Simon Sinek on and he was talking, I don't like mental health is what Simon said. He's like, I like mental fitness. Yeah, because that's exactly what it is. It's exactly what you're talking about. It's something that you have to proactively work on. Um, I want to bring I want to bring the audience back to back when you were selling. You've always been a salesman. Mm -hmm. um, what have you learned? What lessons have you learned in selling the things that you've sold um, in your career? Um, lessons around sales are sales is not about being pushy. It's not about you know, bugging the hell out of somebody or just asking them to buy. I mean, the first company I worked for on the door to door is pest control. And they're like, you, if you head nod, then they'll nod some consciously. And it's like, no, that's a bunch, of bullshit. <laughs> a bunch of bullshit. You ask questions, you discover concerns, then you dive deeper to see if those are the real concerns. And then you try to solve those. And if you do have the option to solve those, then they're going to ask you what the next step is. You don't even need to freaking ask them what they want to do next. You know, yep. they're going to ask you, okay, what is the next step? But it, it's really about connecting with someone and finding their concerns and then truly trying to solve those. I think that's the difference between, you know, a sales job and being a professional salesperson is, is really diving in and understanding and solving those. So being a salesperson and owning a cookie franchise, um, I kind of built it backwards. I didn't have a franchise and then like, Hey, how am I going to go sell this? I bought a single store company and then I went and tried to franchise it. But before I franchise it, I just went and talked to everybody. I said, Hey, this is what my idea would be. Sean, if I did something like this, would you be interested? And you said, and you would say, yeah, that sounds pretty good, but you know what? The labor's just too high. 
I don't want to hire that many teenagers. Oh, shoot. How, how am I going to solve that? Well, if I, what if I buy this machine? And then I'm going to go work and solve that issue. And then I'm going to then come back to you and another 10 people. Okay, Sean, I solved that issue. Would you be interested in purchasing it if it was now set up like this? Well, you know, it would be, but those rotations or the box or the packet, whatever it is, well, I'm going to go, I'm going to go fix that. And then I'm going to come back to you and present the best product possible. So I built the product according to what I saw as what the customer, what the market wanted, which is a very, very simple food franchise. I mean, it doesn't have to be a food franchise, but just a simplistic franchise with one or two employees, low overhead, low cost of goods, almost no perishable items in the store, like nothing goes bad. So it was really just going to the market and then creating what I saw the need was. Why cookies? Just because they're good. I'm not a cookie guy. I mean, I love cookies. But like I don't make cookies. I don't eat a lot of cookies. I just saw it as um, it's it's a hot market right now. Yep. And I think I have the best model than anybody hands down. And with the best model comes the best sales, comes the best revenue. And what can I do with that revenue? I think I can make a difference. We have Life is Sweet Foundation, which is our nonprofit. And we will open up one... Um, mindfulness room per franchise we open. A mindfulness room, you're you're going into a K through 12 school and converting an old classroom into a spot where kids can learn about emotions. So they, they're coming into these rooms, are identifying how they're feeling, which we're not taught that as kids. So what the hell are emotions? How are we feeling? Then you choose an activity for 10 minutes, guided meditation, breathing exercises, gratitude cards, whatever. And then as you're leaving, you're also um, determining or identifying your emotion again. So, so it's teaching kids what emotions are, how to identify them, and then what coping mechanisms are out there to help them. Like these kids are going to get bullied when they leave, right? So it's not about protecting them from being bullied, which would be a great goal. Um, but it's, you're going to get kicked in the teeth for the rest of your life. What do you do to cope with it? And, and you can change your nervous system in a few minutes with different breath work, you know, like there's actual science-based tools that that, that we can use. We just need to bring those to the kids. So I chose cookies because it was scalable. And I thought that I can do a thousand stores and a thousand wellness centers within five years and educate millions of kids. That's why I chose cookies. What are the Utah cookie wars? Why is there such a problem with cookies in Utah? <laughs> There's not a problem with cookies. There's a problem with a <laughs> dumbass company named Crumble. <laughs> um, it, it's, it's, and this is my opinion. And I'm always right. I'm just joking. <laughs> Crumble. That's what your lawyers told you to say. <laughs> Crumble came up with a cookie that was bigger than the average cookie. And that's the only innovation that they really had. So they see other companies. And it was funny because they're not even the first one to do the large cookie, not even in Utah. Anyways, um, they have a lot of money. They're a multi-billion dollar organization. Um, they're the only nation, national like gourmet cookie company right now that's actually doing something. They saw a bunch of other companies um, starting up with a similar idea. And it's like, okay, well, let's sue them um, because I can sue you, Sean, based on literally nothing. I can say, look, Sean, you said dirty dough was was, was bad and I'm going to sue you for defamation. And, and for you just to defend yourself and say, no, that's bullshit, that could cost you six figures. Yep. You know? So- the cookie wars legitimately had side-by-side -side cookie pictures of their products versus ours. And their complaint is, look, this is too confusing. Cookie with sprinkles, a cookie with cinnamon on it, vanilla ice cream. <laughs> like <Chocolate> they, <laughs> they legitimately put our vanilla ice cream next to their, their, their vanilla ice cream. And then the funniest part about all of it is uh, they copied us on, on, on five of the six examples that they used as an example. Anybody with a cell phone can go and look on social media. Every time a product's released by Dirty Dough or Crumble, it's released on social media. So it's all timestamped, right? Yeah. They actually copied us on five of the six examples. They copied us. I mean, how like how sloppy can a lawsuit get, right? They just threw mud at the wall, nothing stuck. And um, I mean, for us, it really boosted us. It gave us national attention. We paid, you know, you said, uh, cookie's so good. You left San Diego. We actually had a billboard that said cookie's so good. We're being sued. And we threw it on, <laughs> on the highway. And we had, we had other billboards, like our cookies don't crumble with competition. We paid professional actors to make fun of crumble. Um, and we got national attention over it and we sold hundreds. Bring, of bring me into the, bring me into the story. How, I mean, it takes courage 
um, as a leader to tell your legal team that you're going to go onto social media and yeah. let people know the truth, because I'm sure there were plenty of people that said, Bennett, please, please don't do that. This could be used against us. Oh yeah. Why did, why did, why did, why did you do it? Um, that's just, I mean, that, that's who I am going back to like core values. It's optimism. One of them is optimism. Like you don't expect life to be perfect. I don't expect life to be perfect. And it's a very good reminder of every time you're like, shit, entrepreneurism is hard. Like what payroll again, what this sucks, but it's like, wait, I, I wasn't expecting a good ride, right? Like this is the thrill of it. This is the fun. So um, how do you take a situation like a lawsuit from a billion dollar organization and uh, have fun with it? What's, well, what's the optimism and then, and the lightheartedness of, of, you know, it's like, let's make fun of it, not directly attacking crumble. I mean, now I kind of do um, because it's gone. <laughs> so Before now, I was what, cause what? Cause it's been, it's like a freaking year. I'm like, all right, you guys just F off. Yeah. These dudes have my cell phone. They know me. We live in the same freaking city. Yeah. They didn't send a cease and desist letter. It's like, it's so apparent that they didn't trademark disputes are like, Hey, Sean, I feel like, you know, your logo is too close to my logo and people are going to cause confusion. Let's work it out. Here's a cease and desist letter. That's, yeah. that's what everybody does. Crumble didn't do that. They just filed the lawsuit. I was like, these guys are, these guys are assholes, whatever. Or they're just taking bad advice from their attorney. And it, I mean, they legitimately turned us into their number one competitor. We have yeah. sold more stores than anybody else. Um, and here in the next two months, we'll be, you know, second in stores open as well. So that's, that was kind of the, they sued us. The initial plan was not to do anything. And we didn't do anything for like 45 days. And then a local news station picked it up and they posted about it. So I picked it. I, I, I was like, okay, well, if it's out there, I have to be the one to control the narrative. And I was a hundred percent confident in controlling the narrative. And um, I mean, CNBC interviewed us and good morning America and wall street journal. And they, and guess who everybody else wanted. I mean, they all wanted to interview crumble. Right. And guess how many interviews crumbles accepted none. Cause what the hell are you going to say on national yeah. television? When somebody's like, do you really think you can sue somebody because they use whimsical theme designs? Like what, yeah. like, what are they going to answer to that? So I knew immediately that everybody's going to come to me and I have a, like, I can paint the picture of what happened and crumble can't crumble's not going to respond because they know they're in the wrong. And since they've sued us, they've literally not accepted one interview. <laughs> so it's been super beneficial for us. So it's one thing on the media side when you have national outlets reaching out to you it's another thing when you bring in a creative team to create content around the pro around the problem and then put that on instagram and put it on tiktok and put it on youtube which is all i mean when i when i was doing research for this episode i was blown away at how well the production value is the storyline all of it how Bring bring us into the creative process of uh, of the of the cookie wars, the cookie gate content. Yeah, so so a guy calls me up um, on on LinkedIn. It's, it's all on LinkedIn because I'm posting everything on LinkedIn. I mean, I still get people like just this week somebody interviewed for a job or something. Like, hey, how'd you hear about uh, us? And it was oh, I follow Bennett on LinkedIn. You know, so yeah. LinkedIn has been a very very powerful tool, uh, which I didn't even have. I didn't even have a LinkedIn account a year ago. Really? And now I've had several million um, impressions and comment, you know, and it's, it's really blown. Why up. did you, why did you start your LinkedIn account? A mastermind that I was a part of says you need a personal brand. And I thought that was stupid. Oh, wait, I'm sorry. Can you repeat that? Uh, is that, I need to hear that again for those, <laughs> for those, for those that are driving and listening to this, what, what did the mastermind tell you? You have to have a personal brand. And I always, I'm and why, it's... why did, why did they say you need a personal brand? Wait, what did you, um, how many numbers, what were the numbers, the LinkedIn numbers, I've millions over, of impressions? I've had over 3 million impressions my first 12 months of getting on it. And we've oh. sold, I mean, those 300 franchises, 320 something that we're at, we haven't used a broker. We haven't paid for an ad. It's all just been my LinkedIn and my it's social media. It's all been media. content. It's all, all been content. All so storytelling. I was scared to get on social media before um, because I didn't want... I don't want haters. You know, I don't want people posting on my shit and like, oh, you're stupid. You can't make, I, I was just, I was scared of that. Um, a business coach said, anyways, just told me to, to, to F and grow up, swore at me a little bit. Who was the business coach? Um, the mastermind was called Apex okay. it's out of Dallas and um, the business coach, man, what the hell is his name? 
I was only with him for like three or four months. Freaking love the dude. It's br- brilliant advice. <laughs> I mean, it was just like, well, this was me. I'm like, I don't want to post. I would post like two or three times a year for kids' birthdays. And it's like, well, do I be smart with this? Do I be witty? Is it funny? Do I be sincere? What are people going to think? And I just overthought it and it was just too much. And I'm just, yeah. and he's just like, who the fuck cares? Yeah. <laughs> I'm just like, okay, let's do it. Let's freaking post a day, one a day. And I personally am not on social media ever, but right now I do two posts a day. It's all automated. You know, yep. somebody else doing it all for me. And that has been such a big thing for me to, uh, to have a personal brand and everybody's, you know, the intent isn't just to self-franchise it. It really is to, I, I think I have some good ideas. I think I have some bad ideas, but get it out there. Some people resonate with it and they'll contact me to speak at something, right? Or they'll want to buy a franchise or they want to invest or they want to connect me with somebody else or they want to donate to the nonprofit. They want me to donate to their nonprofit. I'm open for all of that. So just getting out there and like, this is who I am, love it or hate it. It doesn't matter. Uh, has been super, super big. So that, yeah, that personal branding getting out there has, has been awesome. As far as like the lawsuit goes. So James is, reaches out and he pitches me this idea and he's like, Hey, what if we've hired a George Bush impersonator? And he's talking about like, you know, and he like gives me his whole spiel about cookies and crumbling and the free market and all of that. And we turned down that idea because we didn't want to use anything politically. Cause it's yeah. like, well, you know, maybe it's all you're, you're already on, you're already in hot water. Yeah. So we're like, we're like, well, if it's a George Bush impersonator, maybe people on the right yep. are mad that we're using impersonator and people on the left are mad that we're using George Bush. Yep. So we trashed that idea. And then we came up with some different ideas and uh, I was just very specific on, look, this, this, this is a funny video, but it's educational. There's not one thing in any of the six or seven videos that we released, not one thing that is mentioned there. That's not actually in the lawsuit. So you, you watch it and you don't know about the lawsuit. You're like, there's no way they said that you can't use a rectangular box. You know, there's no way they said you can't use designs or sprinkles on a cookie, but it is. So I went back and forth with the attorneys a decent amount. They're great to work with. They're like, no, you can't address the issues of the lawsuit. And I'm like, what do you mean? That's the only reason I'm doing this. I'm not only going to not, I'm going to address them head on. That's the whole point of this. So I did go back and forth and ultimately I made my decision. It was, look, is so wait, what, what the, did the attorneys tell you? What was they, they the told, advice? They're don't like, do no, 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 no. D- don't, you can't address the, the, the uh, sticky topics. Like they're suing you over a box and you're going to make fun of them for it. And I'm like, exactly. And they're like, no, 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 <laughs> you can make fun of them for other things. I'm like, no, 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 it has to be. It has to be the box. It has to be what's in the lawsuit. And I, and I, so I was like, no, this is what we're doing. So it was really an educational piece while it was funny, um, you know, using humor in it. But we went back and forth a lot and I'm just like, look, what's the worst that's going to happen? Is this illegal for me to say? And they're like, no, as long as it's true. And I was like, well, it's true. Well, what's the downside? Well, crumbles not, you know, maybe they're not going to like, you. I was like, they already hate me. Did you see my billboards? Like, what are they going to do? Like, well, I was going, you know, we, we hated this guy. So we sued him and then he threw up billboards. And so we sued him harder. And then now he's doing like, you can only sue somebody so hard. I think I'm a, I'm a 10 out of 10 as far as how much they hate. So it's like, what do I have to lose at this point? Let's, let's make fun of them. It's absolutely amazing. I love it. Can you uh, talk to me about the family side of content? Because uh, there's a personal brand and then there's a business brand, mm-hmm. but then there's the human that actually lives in both world, the business world and the personal world. Yeah. So I, I mix in um, some personal videos as well. Because I mean, that's, that's who I am. I'm very proud of that. I'm a dad, that I'm a husband. Um, so two or three of the posts will be personal videos of me and my kids and kind of the logistics on the back end. Cause I said, I'm not the one posting them. I use WeTransfer and an assistant, a social media person hits me up once a month and say, Hey, upload some videos. I go back in my phone and my wife's phone, just upload every video that I've taken of my kids awesome. and then they piece it together and, and post it however they see fit. But I do feel like it is important to, I mean, so much of what makes me, me is my family yeah. and what drives my business decisions is my family. So I do feel like I, I, I need to show that other people don't, and that's totally fine. I mean, I don't, I just felt like I need to share mine. As you continue to sell franchises, um, you told me that thousand was your lucky number. Is that an arbitrary number? Yeah. It's a round number. <laughs> it's a round number. I, I'm not, and I'm going to far enough it. into the future. 
we're going to hit a thousand stores open with a thousand wellness centers in five years. I mean, this year alone, how many wellness centers do you have now? Zero. We're behind. Zero. Okay. Well, we haven't had a store that's been open for um, a year and, and it's usually a year behind. So we have some in the works, but you, you, you're dealing with the freaking government and schools, you know? Yep. So even if they say yes, and even if you give them money, it doesn't open for at least a year. So it'll, our wellness centers will always, uh, you know, trail by about a year. Um, by the end of this year, we'll have a hundred franchises open. And, you know, that was, that was one year doing it. So, and the next, anyways, I, I think we'll hit it. We'll see, but I, I, I think we'll do it. And what's the goal with the media side of your business? With the, say that again, the media side of your business. What do you mean by the media side? You're deeper than dough. That's your media company. Oh, that's my media company. My podcast. I you didn't know. know you didn't know you had a media company. No, thank you. Well, this is breaking news. <laughs> thank you for letting me <laughs> know. Congratulations! You have a you have another company you didn't know. About. Um, the primary goal, and it's so funny because I had a producer, and he's like, "What are your goals?" I was like, "Primary goal. This is a passion project. I like talking to people. I like interviewing yeah. people. I like talking." No, you can't have it because you're not going to make money, and you're paying me. I was like, dude, I'm paying, I'm the, I'm the customer. You're not going to tell me what my yeah, purpose is. Correct. So I got rid of that producer because he didn't listen to anything. <laughs> um, anyways, it really is primary is, is a passion project. I like getting to know people. And I truly, I mean, one of the questions is that I ask pretty much everybody is what has been your biggest um, struggle with mental health? And then they tell me, and then I say, what do you do to be proactive with your mental health? And then they tell me, and then I say, how do you help other people find joy and fulfillment? And then they tell me, and I'm like, well, I get to now use that information in yeah. my own life and how that's way more valuable than, you know, but apart from that, it is a lead source for franchise sales. You know, people, if people resonate it, and if it's not, hopefully it's just helping other people, just how it helps me by getting, you know, tools and tricks from other people. And I, I try to ask actionable items. So it's not just like, oh, well, think positive thoughts. It's not like, no, I go to the gym and I do this meditation on this app for 10 minutes a day. You know, that's what I try to get out of the audience and, uh, or my guests. So the audience can also have, you know, applicable, um, and actionable steps in improving their own lives. So, um, Part of this show is our, our thesis is smartphone storytelling that any anyone, uh, you don't need to be an entrepreneur, but anyone, and you can be in the hospitality business, everyone's a creator because of the internet, because of the smartphone, what you have in your pocket, um, we're all creators. And this is a new segment that we're going to try out. You're going to be the first first guest to try out this segment. And this is our smartphone storytelling segment. So I need you to give me your quick impressions to uh, this or that question, which is, are you an iPhone or an Android? iPhone. Are you? Do you have the latest version of the iPhone or do you? Yes. Do you I, up 14 Pro Max. And I still pro. get mad at it. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Are you a text or an email guy? Text, a hundred percent. Slack, yes or no? No. Uh, Zoom or Google Hangouts? Google. Uh, Apple Podcasts, uh, Apple Music or Spotify? Google. Google. <laughs> let, let me give you the tip though. It's because Let's... I watch YouTube, and if you pay for the paid, ver I'm not gonna watch a freaking ad. So yes. I'm going to pay the 10 bucks a month. Might as well get the music as well. Okay. There you go. See, now, I'm, now we're, we're learning something here. <laughs> um, are you too old? You're too, you're too young for Napster to have an, I remember Napster. Napster. No, I, I had an MP3. That was probably, I mean, that's, <laughs> ele that's elementary school for me. I remember that's my elementary friend. school way to date me. I was in college. Yeah, man. That came out. <laughs> I was on Napster and LimeWire. That was the other one that came out right before. There after. you go. Yeah. Um, TikTok. I never get on, but I have a TikTok and account and it gets posted on daily. Pinterest. Never been on. Next door. What is next door? I've, I've heard of it. What is it? Yelp. Yelp. I don't like Yelp. Twitter. Never been on, but I do have an account and an account. Instagram. Yes. Yes. You, I like you, Instagram. You, you passed the test. Okay. Good. That, that is that is the smartphone storytelling where we get to learn a little bit more about uh your individual our guests actual uh usage of their smartphone um every single week on wednesday and friday on the social audio app clubhouse 
Um, we have digital hospitality leaders from all over the globe. You, the listener, please come on stage. Uh, tell us about your restaurant. Tell us about what you're building. If you're a sales professional, marketing professional, we got an incredible community. The rising tide lifts all ships. Uh, this week, we want to give a social shout out um, to at Jim's Roast Beef. Um, at Jim, we appreciate you, man. Thanks for listening. Thanks for joining Clubhouse. Uh, Bennett, who in your network at Dirty Dough, do you want to give a shout out to? This is Entrepreneur. It's a big platform. I know you got a big team. I don't want the team answer. I want one person, one shout out. Jill Summer Hayes. I didn't have to think about that. She's our CEO. <laughs> this is her 40th year as a CEO of a franchise or food brand. And she kicks ass. She does everything. And I just do podcasts. And it's a great, great relationship because she is so much better than I am at running a company. And my final question is, uh, what do you think of Zach Oates, the founder of Ovation? Zach, ugh. no, I'm just joking. I freaking love Zach. <laughs> I met him. Somebody connected me with him or he reached out on LinkedIn for me to be on his podcast. I was like, Zach, we've met before. And he's like, no, we haven't. I was like, dude. And I told him when it was, he was dating my friend's older sister seven years ago. And he met He dated person. like a thousand people. Yeah, yeah, that was one of the thousands. He wrote a book. <laughs> he wrote a um, book about the thousand people. But also, his, one of his cousins I, I I played football with and I was good friends with, Garrett Bowles, who's an NFL uh, Denver Broncos dude right now. So I think I met him when I was really young and then again, maybe seven years ago. But no, he's, he's a great guy. He's, he's dirt, so goofy. He's does so Dirty goofy. Dough use, use Ovation? Are yes. you Ovation customers? Yes. Okay, that's good. We good are. To and Toast. And Toast customers? Oh, yeah. look at that. See? See toast. We didn't even, I didn't even know. I had no idea. We just Look switched because of this podcast. You, <laughs> I will let the toast team know that. Well, if you ever have any needs with toast, please let me know. I sit on the customer advisory board and I'm, I'm kind of loud toast advocate. Um, okay. <laughs> that is awesome. Uh, if you guys want to get in touch with me, it's at Sean P Walchef, S H A W N P W A L C H E F. And that's on all the social platforms. You can give us a follow at Cali BBQ media on Instagram. You can find clips of the show. Um, thank you for subscribing. Bennett, where can people find you, um, you personally and the brand connect with Bennett, you? Yeah. BennettMaxwell.com is my website, B E N N E T T. And then there's links to all, you know, the socials. Um, I'm, I post on all socials daily or, you know, trying to get out content or podcast clips or whatever. Um, and then dirty is to check out the company. I think we have what if, what if people want to get in, get into the franchise business? Yeah, dirtydo.com. Um, you can apply there. We'll you put can links watch in the podcast. Show notes. Yeah, apply. I mean, you can kind of watch a podcast that gives you a big overview of what we're doing, who we are, why getting into a dirty dough franchise, why we think we're the we're the bees knees, and why we're I love it. Well, keep uh keep it up, keep raising the bar, Bennett. I truly appreciate it, man. Thank you guys for listening. We appreciate you, and we will catch you all next week. Thank you for listening to Restaurant Influencers. The best way that you can help us with the show is to subscribe and write a review. We love the opportunity to connect with you no matter where you are on the globe, no matter what restaurant you are running. Please send us a DM on social at Sean P. Walchef. If you are interested in toast, if you want to improve your digital hospitality, please send me a DM. I will get you in touch with a local toast representative. We appreciate you listening to this show. The best way that you can help this show is share it with a friend and we will catch you all next week or we will see you on one of the digital playgrounds that we call social media.